January 15th, 2010. From the stylish and high-tech underground studios of Ribbit Media in historic Warwick, Rhode Island, this is News Undies. <laughs> For January 15th, 2010, this is News Undies. All the news that shouldn't be news. I'm Paul Torville with this head cold. Earthquake topples poorly constructed Haiti. God apologizes for Haitian Tembler, meant to hit Robertson. Brit Hume pimps for Christ to Wayward Tiger. Picnic boat sized asteroid passes close to Earth. What's a picnic boat? Conan to NBC, get stuffed. NBC to Leno, don't forget the Doritos. Mark McGuire. Hey gang, it's time for Celebrity Birthdays once again. I got my cake hat on. Let's rock! For Saturday the 16th, Diane Fossey, dead, and Dr. Laura Schlesinger. Blah. For Sunday the 17th, Al Capone, dead, and Michelle Obama. For Monday the 18th, Ray Dolby, and Michael B. For Tuesday the 19th, Janis Joplin, dead, and Robert Palmer, dead. For Wednesday the 20th, Tom Baker and Lorenzo Lamas. For Thursday the 21st, Eric Holder and Paul Allen. And for Friday the 22nd, Bill Bixby, dead, and John Hurt. That's Celebrity Birthdays. I'm Paul Torval, and I'm done! We'll have stories in detail after this. I'm an atheist. 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 Vermont is home to grumblings for secession. The Vermont Independence Party, a secession-themed third party, is putting up candidates for governor, lieutenant governor, and seven state senate seats. For our viewer in Vermont, here's a heads up. You have the 50th largest economy of the 50 states. You are essentially landlocked, that is to say, you are dependent on waterways through other countries to get to the open ocean. Your principal industries are maple syrup and dairy products. If you do secede, what then? Just wondering. Pope Benedict XVI, known the world over for his grasp on science and causal relationships, has denounced the failure of the recent Copenhagen Climate Summit to produce real change. The Pope didn't mention that God has the power to fix this whole mess with a mystical wave of his divine hand, and that he, the Pope, is the one with the direct access to God's ear. The more ponderworthy question seems to be this. Does the Pope actually buy into this bill of goods he's selling us? Simon Cowell Vapid, adulpated former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin has taken a position as a commentator on the Fox News Channel. What may be most shocking about this is that even after Katie Couric eviscerated Palin on national TV with simple, gentle, softball questions, Fox executives thought, now that's the kind of woman we need on our team. Sure, Bill O'Reilly is a hot-headed, frequently, flagrantly wrong, loudmouth prick, but at least you can follow what he's saying, even if it's wrong. The always entertaining evangelical lunatic Pat Robertson has managed to top himself with his statement regarding the recent earthquake in Haiti. Should Robertson step down or be removed by his handlers? Here are Pig and Sheep with their thoughts. Well, he did say it was the truth, so I believe him, but maybe he could have said it better. Amen? Oh, crap. Look, Robertson has been a dangerous lunatic for decades, and while he is slowly being marginalized in his own organization, the time has long since passed for him to be put out to pasture where his idiocy endangers no one. That's what Pig and Sheep think. What are your thoughts? Email them to ovcomments at newsundies.com. And now, here's Moose Weintraub and the Sports Half Minute. Moose 
Weintraub. Welcome to the Sports Half Minute. News today from the USA Rock Paper Scissors League. Thanks, Moose. Always a great report from Moose. In an effort to hold to their Don't Be Evil mantra, Google founders Larry Page and Sergey Brin have directed the company to threaten to leave China if the Chinese government doesn't back off its pressure to comply with its draconian censorship laws. Google has reportedly been struggling with this for years, but now, apparently, Brin and Page's consciences have gotten the better of them. A business with a conscience. <laughs> that can't last. We'll be back with your exclusive past cast weather and the final news roundup after this. You'll notice that when you watch News Undies, I'm always wearing a shirt from the Ursus Pacifica Sketch Cave. Well, now you can too. You can help support News Undies by going to the Ursus Pacifica Sketch Cave and getting some kitsch. And now, here's your exclusive past cast weather for the week ending January 15th, 2010. For the southeast, we saw thunderstorms, then switched to sunny and cold conditions. For Florida, we saw sunny skies and warm conditions with showers moving in late in the week. The lower Great Lakes had snow with bitter cold. And that's your exclusive past cast weather. Kate Goslin. The Doomsday Clock, an assessment of mankind's readiness to extinct itself, has been adjusted to give us another 60 seconds. The Bulletin of Atomic Scientists, which has maintained it since creating it in 1947, hope to show just how insane we are. On the clock, midnight represents the end of humanity. The clock has seen some wild fluctuations. For the bulk of the Eisenhower administration, it was set at 11.58. Ironically, the clock was most optimistically set in 1991 at 11.43. Now, six minutes to midnight, we're a minute worse off than when the clock was first set 53 years ago. And finally, and I do mean finally, we all saw this coming, didn't we? Teddy Pendergrass is dead. Eight months after colon cancer surgery, Teddy's difficult recovery is over. The 1982 car accident that took the use of his legs also reduced Pendergrass's prominence as a sex symbol. According to an AP story on Pendergrass's death, he had become, quote, more of a sympathetic tragic figure, end quote, since the accident. Well, that's nice. Here's hoping Nakisa Mumby Moody can write my obit when I shuffle off this mortal coil. Well, that's all for this edition of News Undies. If you see news that shouldn't be news, email your story tips to undies at newsundies.com. Remember, News Undies is a weekly show, and we'll be back with fresh News Undies on Friday, January 22nd. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm Paul Torville. After that, I might be Sully Sullenberger. <laughs> no chance. He's a much better pilot than I am. Oh. At the top of the show when I said I'm Paul Torvald with this head cold, I wasn't kidding. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, this sucks. <laughs>